Hey guys, today I am going to show you some of the strangest chess games that I have ever seen in my chess career. Recently, a chess player, a grandmaster, made waves in the chess community. He started beating left and right all his opponents while sacrificing his rook on move 2. This was crazy. Everybody was speculating. Who is it? Magnus Carlsen, Hikaru Nakamura. Only two of those guys could have pulled that off beating the top grandmasters of the world without a rook. But finally, this dispute uh, was resolved yesterday by chess.com, which banned this user, this grandmaster, for violating the fair play policy. So, supposedly, this guy is a cheater and he's a GM because you cannot be a GM, you cannot have those two letters next to your chess.com username unless you provide proof, a document, that you are a GM. So, there is this GM who is maybe a cheater, maybe it's a false positive, I don't know. But he was crushing everyone and let me show you a couple of his games, three of his games that really impressed me. From his blitz match against Daniel Naroditsky, one of the best chess players in the world, one of the best blitz players in the world. Top 10, top 20 on chess.com uh, at all times. And uh, he crushed Daniel in many of those games. He won this like 70 game match against him. Daniel fought back very valiantly and... Uh, it was a very strange feeling watching those games, so let me just share them with you. So in the first one, Daniel is playing with the white pieces, and we get the strangest chest openings I've ever seen. Maybe only the bone cloud is, <laughs> is more strange. So e4, a5, d4, rook, a6. This guy, v-i-i-h, so, vich, so, I don't know, from Brazil, um, the GM, as you can see, was playing this uh, the whole match with white playing a4 and rook a3, uh, with black playing a5 and rook a6. This is nonsense. White just takes uh, the free rook with a bishop and gets uh, a two-point advantage, because uh, as we are all taught, a rook is worth five pawns and the bishop is worth just three. The computer says that it's plus 1.4 approximately, not plus two, because at least black has the two bishops advantage. But Black is down two points of material against uh, one of the strongest Blitz players of all time. So let's see how the game proceeded. It was fascinating, guys. Don't miss this. Uh, so um, Black fine catches the bishop. And for the time being, Black is uh, not immediately losing because the rooks are not activated. They are standing idly on the respective files and they are not joining the action. You cannot feel the true power of the rooks currently. So they are just uh, chilling at home. One of them now gets activated and uh, white tries to kill this bishop uh, with the d5 move. These two pawns uh, restrict this bishop. So this is the unopposed light square bishop by black. So white tries to put its pawns on the light squares to restrict the bishop. And uh, it's doing a great job, actually. Nerdisky is a very powerful player, so he knows what he's doing. By the way, uh, have you seen my podcast episode with Daniel that we've recorded recently, like uh, a week uh, ago? We've discussed the candidate's results, we've discussed how he improves his blitz skills, highly recommend it. And uh, I remind you that we need 1000 comments under that video to make part two, as we discussed. There are already like 400 comments, so we need 600 more. If you want to see part two, go back to that video and uh, leave another comment if you, if you have left one. If you haven't left, leave at least the first one. Okay, deal? Let's go. So, um, Bishop g5, white is crushing. Uh, white has already developed. Black skin is still in the center. Uh, those pieces look very menacing. This knight is strong. This knight like doesn't look too impressive at the moment this knight is not developed by black this rook is still in the corner uh, so mm, how can black survive him in this position so now for the time being the queen is attacked black blocks with the knight and now Narodiski decides you know what i'm going to blow open the center i'm going to blow open those lines for my rooks and he goes d6 which is a great move, not maybe the best one according to the computer, but Daniel Nerdisky is not a computer, he's just a very strong human player. So, by the way, we played a Blitz game with Daniel at the end of the podcast, check it out. Not the game that I would <laughs> call my best one, but it was very instructive. So, uh, now, Black cannot castle, because if Black castles, White will just take this free knight. So, Black faces some problems, and uh, 
mm, has to deal with them. So f6 is the move played by black, not a happy decision, but at least now the bishop has to retreat. Uh, and now black desperately tries to do something, maneuvering the knight to kick this queen away because the queen uh, will restrict the movement of uh, black's king, uh, pre preventing uh, black from castling. So the queen draws back. And now g5, and this is very strange, guys. When I saw this game, I was like, who the hell plays like this and has the rating of 3100? One of the highest ratings on chess.com, behind like Magnus Hikaru and a couple of other guys. Who is this guy? G5, this violates all opening principles of chess. In the opening, you should castle your king as soon as possible. You should take the center, you should develop the pieces, put your knights maybe closer to the center. Uh, you should not do what this guy is doing. But somehow, he's not losing. He is attacking, actually. So, Rook D1. Narodiski is doing everything in the correct way. The Soviet school of chess. You should put your rooks on the open files. You should centralize your pieces. All the pieces are centralized. The knights are standing nicely. The rooks are standing nicely by white. The queen and the bishop form a powerful duo. The king has castled itself and is out of danger. But black is doing none of those things. And this is very strange. So h5, now continuing the attack. Well, this justifies leaving the rook here, so maybe black won't castle at all. But this is not the way you should play chess, guys. If you do this at home, you will lose all of your games. So knight d4, again, centralization of the knight. Uh, great move. Knight c5, knight b5. Now, now this knight probably can jump in via this square. Bishop c6, knight check. Not the most accurate move according to Stockfish, but still good enough. White is dominating. Again, black cannot castle here, but apparently black doesn't even want to castle here. Black uh, rotates the bishop back, kicking the uh, queen away. And now rook g8 uh, signalizes the fact that this attack is brewing, at least maybe, potentially. a3, uh, white wants to go before and kick this knight. It's probably the only active piece that black has. Uh, at the moment that does anything in this position. So a4, preventing b4. Now if b4, en passant, is possible. Uh, knight d5, great uh, and uh, spectacular sacrifice of a knight by Daniel Naradiski. Not technically the best move, but a beautiful one. So if black takes, white takes here and opens up this file for uh, attacking on the enemy king. So if the bishop drops back, for example, the computer gives bishop takes g5, with a discovered attack. Yeah, looks uh, nice, but this wasn't even uh, the worst uh, situation for black, so the computer recommends taking it here, actually. And you know what is so strange about this uh, cheater or not cheater? Uh, he didn't play the top engine lines all the time, otherwise he would have been banned immediately. Chess.com has good algorithms to detect that. Uh, he was sometimes playing some strange moves, not the top engine recommendation, not the top two or top three recommendation. And often uh, he was getting into very bad positions, even considering the fact that he's down uh, a rook for a bishop. So at, at the beginning of the game, he had like uh, plus 1.5 advantage, I mean, Naradiski had. But at some point of those games, Naradiski was even outplaying his opponent. But then suddenly there was like this turning point and uh, the guys started playing like a computer. And this is what's really strange. So let's see what he does here. He doesn't take the knight. He goes um, king f7, which is also a logical move, one of the best ones. Uh, the knight rotates to b4, and black takes one pawn. Okay, it's just a pawn. The, the attack still continues. Knight a6 is a great move. If knight takes here, then queen takes this important bishop, which would be bad for black. So black uh, drops back its bishop. Uh, we have uh, an exchange here, and somehow, do you see this? Do you see the eval bar? It's 0.00. .00. Somehow, it's now back to equality. White is still up material. White is still up a rook for a bishop. White has given up one pawn, but technically white is one pawn up. But white is not even better anymore, despite uh, everything done incorrectly according to chess principles by black. So the queen drops back. Now uh, the queen uh, protects, overprotects this pawn. White uh, goes before trying to exploit the spin, but black just takes en passant. And now black is eyeing this 
this pawn and it gets really dangerous for white i would even prepare black already because the two bishops combo can be very dangerous and this line this file can can open up it's soon and uh, it's unpleasant to play this so f3 tries to block this diagonal in the same way as previously daniel tried to block the diagonal with d5 but black is already better the computer says g4 striking on the g file now this decision becomes uh, in retrospect very logical and uh, a genius one putting the rook on the g file instead of castle okay f takes he takes on g2 he could have of course taken with the rook on g4 also a great move with some advantage for black but he decides to take uh, the g2 pawn and take here on g4 maybe later but daniel does not resign here he goes g5 a great move trying to make the opponent take uh, with the pawn blocking this file and that would be even better for white queen d3 queen h7 inf infiltration some some queen d7 is looming on so yeah that would have been bad for black taking the pawn great resource as always found by Neradiski. uh black develops the bishop instead of taking black says uh, take my pawn i will checkmate you in this in this case because this is a discovered check and and uh there are no more moves. This uh, is met with this, and this is a checkmate. So, of course, you cannot take this pawn. Uh, rook d2. No side wants to take the other side's pawn with a pawn. Bishop h3. Again, opening up this file. Very unpleasant for white. But white is holding on. Rook f2, trying to create some counterplay. So, you know, when you are worse, you should not just meekly, passively stand idly. No, you should... Uh, find some counter chances, especially in blitz. You should try to attack your opponent to create some space for mistakes by your opponent. But what if your opponent is a machine that doesn't make mistakes? Bishop f5, blocking the f file. h4, trying to support this pawn, very important pawn that blocks the enemy's attack. But there is an exchange now here. One uh, pair of bishop is exchanged and uh, black wins another pawn with check. So, on the one hand, white has exchanged the dark squared bishops, which is very important because now uh, white goes king h2, and if black had the dark square bishop to check the skin, that the game would be over already. So, two bishops work better than one bishop. So, it was important to exchange uh, a pair of bishops, but uh, this pawn uh, now has gotten taken. There is material equality on the board, and this king is not feeling too safe. You know, this queen is controlling this important diagonal. This rook cannot leave the defense of the g2 square. This bishop is actually doing a great job, uh, like, shooting throughout the whole board. I wouldn't say that it's too much worse than uh, this rook that's not doing too much. So, yeah, impressive stuff by black. Queen c7 check. Now white tries to block. White would be so happy to trade off the queens here because that would mean that probably there would be no checkmate. But even trading the queens actually is not bad here. The computer gives queen takes e5, rook e5 and some minor advantage for black because those pawns could march and uh, yeah, that could get unpleasant. But uh, practically speaking, it's best not to exchange queens in such position, which uh, black doesn't do. Queen d8, uh, maybe you can rotate queen to, for example, g8 square, continuing the attack. Rook d1, again trying to activate the rooks. Rooks should be put on open or semi-open files. d5, now the center pawn mass starts running. Rook f1, maybe in some future there is a sacrifice on f5, for example, if black goes like c4, there could be... Well, maybe they could be, maybe they couldn't be sacrifices on f5. But uh, black doesn't allow that. King g6, uh, sidestepping the spin, very important uh, to do that. Rook g1, trying to exchange some pieces to lessen the impact of the attack. But rook g4, of course black could have taken on g1, but black says, I want to trade on my terms. And after taking, black takes with the pawn. And this pawn gets closer to uh, queen in, and also queen h4 now. Queen h4 is a huge threat. So very unpleasant again for white. King goes to g3 to prevent this check from h4. Now c4, the pawn starts mar marching on the other side of the board, using the fact that the bishop is controlling this square, so this could get very unpleasant. White does not wait any moment longer. White needs counterplay. As I told you, you always should seek for counterplay. And now white wants to infiltrate with the rook, and now the power of the rook will be felt. 
probably, but it's still equal and it's still anyone's game. So takes rook h8 infiltration, queen e7, check. And here both sides were already in time trouble. The best move here for, for black is king h6. And after a check here, there is uh, bishop h7, rook takes, and then e5. That's what the computer recommends. And yeah, that could get uh, dangerous uh, very fast. Also, this pawn is marching. But on the other hand, uh, the computer says that at least white is not worse. White has some uh, counterplay of its own <laughs> marching with this pawn. But this is crazy. This is madness. But somehow this all-powerful uh, player playing with black did not go king h6, which is the best move. He went king h7 and blundered a mate in one. <laughs> Queen h8 checkmate. That's how this game ended. But I told you that uh, most of the games were won by uh, the so, not by Daniel Nordiski. This was an exception. This was an exceptional game where Daniel uh, was uh, struggling for the whole game, even though he had won a rook on move two. He was struggling, but then he found his footing, he found his counterplay, and he managed to defeat this man or this machine, I don't know. But uh, I will show you now a couple of other games where it did not look so bright for Daniel Narditsky. So let's jump into the next one. Okay, so now Daniel's opponent is playing with the white pieces and opens up with one a4 and rook a3. And again, the rook gets taken, knight takes, and it's minus one because white has an extra tempo if compared with the previous game. But still it's bad because black has this pawn center, black has uh, elite in development and also <laughs> black has a rook, two rooks and uh, white has just one. So you know, what is going to happen here is a demonstration of the power of uh, computer chess. I, I dare say that this game could not have been played by a human player. I'm very much sure. So for the time being, both sides de de developed, nothing too crazy. Um, so in this game, uh, Vich so decided to not be as cheeky as in the previous one and he castled, he did not <laughs> go like h4, g4 immediately instead of castling. So now d3, uh, white, uh, black exchange just one pair of bishops because two bishops are better than one, as I said. And this bishop is again restricted by those pawns, so it's looking nice for Daniel Narodiski. He has uh, built on his opening advantage. Um, and he has a comfortable position, much better for black, obviously. So he rotates the knight, maybe the knight wants to go here, uh, as is common in such positions, but white initiates counterplay of its own, trying to break open this uh, pawn chain, which is very important to activate the light square's uh, bishop, the dark squared bishop. So knight g4 jumps in and utilizes this weak square, but knight c4 protects this square. And uh, now some crazy stuff starts happening. So f5, blowing open the position. You should uh, open up files if you have uh, an extra rook, you know. So Daniel is doing everything correctly. h3, now check uh, exchanging material. But now there was some miscalculation probably by Daniel because uh, now the complications work out for white. White takes the pawn, black takes the pawn, and white goes d4. And now white has this amazing pawns in the center. And yes, black is still better, but if black finds the best moves, will black find the best moves? So rook of eight is not the, one, the best one. Knight f4 now. Now those pawns could get taken very soon. And then this pawn center will be very important. And when it starts moving, it will get very bad for black. So knight g6 trying to exchange some pieces. Queen e2. Knight takes, pawn takes. Now there is this trifecta of pawns. Very powerful. Queen here, c4. The pawn mass is marching, is rolling forward, and no one will be able to stop it. First, white takes one pawn, then white goes d5. And finally, you remember this bishop? It was standing idly. It was like this, uh, this guy with an ankle bracelet <laughs> at his home. Uh, unable to walk uh, further than 50 meters from his home. And now he feels that he has the freedom again. So queen h6 trying to pressure this pawn, initiating some counterplay, but uh, the bishop just drops back and this pawn now is protected. And those pawns are very, very powerful. And you see the evil bar already says that it's equality. 
but I would prefer white actually here with those pawns. Uh, so queen gives a check, but uh, the king just moves to h2. And now rook g1. Uh, taking this pawn here would was possible, but uh, I don't know what white didn't like here. Like rook h5, for example, you can just trade and go rook e1 and the pawns are queening very soon. But still, uh, white was in no rush and also white was not making the best moves all the time, the first lines of the computer. Otherwise, white would have been banned very soon. So rook g1, attacking the queen first, then taking this pawn, takes takes, and it's completely winning for white. Rook h5, trying to initiate some counterplay and attack on the king, but just rook g3, pr pr protecting everything. Queen here, trying to maybe check from this side of the board, but e6, doesn't matter. This is just a check, you can block with the rook and it's okay. Queen here, trying to maybe pin, but uh, queen d4. Now white also had some threats of its own. Checkmate in one is threatened. Queen c7, defense, d6, attacks. And now you can do nothing. Queen c2 is a check, but it's just one check. Rook g2. Now checkmate is still threatened. So uh, black has to give up in the rook with check and give some more checks. But white king is just uh, running away and it's completely winning. Here, Daniel Narodisky uses his final trick, a dirty blitz trick, queen d1 check. Hoping that the opponent doesn't see uh, that king h2 loses to queen takes d4. But the opponent, of course, saw that trick and just took the queen, the free queen. Oh no, my queen. In this case, it was really, oh, oh yes, his queen. And uh, Daniel Nordisky resigned. He was just brutally outplayed. Uh, the opponent down material did not give Daniel any chances. Let's take a look at one final game to brighten up your day. Um, it's a game where I was really proud of Daniel Narodisky. I'm not in the position to say I'm proud of him because I'm not his coach and uh, I'm a much worse player than him, but I was proud of him as a human being who challenged the machine in a 17-game match and who managed to win some of those games in uh, an impressive fashion. So the last one was a brutal, brutal humiliation of the machine. Uh, similar to the one Hikaru uh, played against Ripka in 2008. If you uh, saw that video of mine, uh, comment here. Um, I know that many of my subscribers came from that video, so I want to I want to check if you are still with me. So, and if you haven't seen that video, check it out. It's it's uh, it's an exciting game, man against the machine. So let's check out the third game of this match. So how to defeat a machine in just 22 moves? E4, A5. Again, we have the same variation. White is up an exchange, but black is uh, trying to use uh, the bishops. But e5, Daniel is not letting his foot off the gas. Bishop g5, pinning the knight. And now bishop f6. This is like a bone in the throat uh, of black's position. A very powerful bishop. Okay, black's castles. Queen d2, I in this square. Very unpleasant. Black decides to take, but now... White takes with a pawn, knight takes, knight takes, bishop takes. And most of you would probably have thought, okay, I can take here and checkmate black, but that would fail to queen takes f6 and black is back in the game. So uh, that's not the move that Daniel made. Knight e5 is the move. And now the idea is if black takes, which happened in the game because black has to take this pawn, otherwise that would be very unpleasant. Now white has a fork. And yes, black took a couple of pawns, but now black is down two exchanges. Black has a bishop and a knight for two rooks, which is uh, usually not enough. Black has a couple of pawns also, but still, uh, black is down material, and black, most importantly, cannot protect its skin. And Daniel punishes this immediately, like in three moves already the game was over. So first c4, opening up some files for the rooks the bishop should take. Now rook a d1. Now this this is threatened. This is straight up checkmate. So black has to do something. If black blocks, then rook takes d5 seals the deal. Because if uh, black takes, then rook e8 is checkmate. Beautiful rook sacrifice. So now white, it is white who is sacrificing its rooks. So uh, this fails. So queen f6 is the only move protecting this square with the queen. But now there is a rook lift. Rook e4 attacking this bishop and also... Well, once this bishop is protected, rook f4. 
And now it's game over, because the queen has to guard this square. If the queen goes here, this is the only move to guard the square. Now rook h4 seals the deal. Queen h4 is uh, h8 is checkmate, so if you go like here, then I take here, and again, if you go here, I have rook d8, and if you go here, I have rook h8, so the rooks are hungry, and they want revenge and they get this revenge. So after rook f4, uh, Daniel Naradiski's opponent resigned. And finally, after 70 games, he was banned. So probably chess.com's algorithms were figuring out whether it's a cheater or not. They were reluctant to ban him, but uh, at the end they decided no human can play like that. So um, apparently it was some GM, but we don't know who it was, but it was a legit GM who cheated. This is some big news. You know, I, I think chess.com should publish the names of cheaters, uh, even if they are GMs, because there should be some uh, reputational damage to those guys. What do you think? Do you agree with me? And do you want to see a podcast with Kramnik? I'm trying to reach him. So looking forward to uh, future podcasts, hopefully with him as well. Uh, drop a comment if you want to uh, see one podcast with him <laughs> as well and see you in the next one. Bye bye.